Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the Russian economy and specifically to talk about the ongoing problems that Russia now has with its oil refinery network as a result of the drone attacks that are continuing to plague them. Over the course of the last two months, Ukraine has launched hundreds of drone attacks specifically targeting Russian oil refineries and these attacks are now becoming more successful and longer in range. And it's recently been reported that the longest ever attack has been successfully recorded on a refinery that's located more than 800 miles from the border of Ukraine. And this means that Russia is now having to defend virtually every single one of its oil refineries. And the problem that Russia has is that these drone attacks are entirely unannounced and therefore it is very difficult for them to be able to put resources in place to fend off everything. So in today's video, we'll talk about the latest attack and have a look at a map which shows the location of that refinery. And you'll be able to see that this is now stretching into new territory from Ukraine's point of view. Previously, Russia would have regarded these refineries as being entirely safe. And the refinery that's been attacked is the third largest in Russia. And obviously, if those sort of facilities go down, that's going to have a hugely damaging impact on Russia's revenues. We'll also have a look at another refinery in Russia that's actually been closed down as a result of a flood. It doesn't rain, it pours from Russia's point of view, and that's obviously causing them concerns. We'll talk about what percentage of the total refinery output of 6.8 million barrels per day has been affected by drone attacks so far. And then we'll go on to talk about what's happening with oil prices. Because unfortunately for everybody else in the world, one of the knock-on implications to these attacks on Russian oil refineries is that oil prices are now rising all across the world. And that has the potential to cause major problems for the global economy. So I'll have a look at what's going on with general oil prices and also specifically Russian oil prices. We'll then talk about what the impact of all of this has been on the Russian economy because Russia is losing tens of billions of dollars as a result of all of these refinery closures. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the implications of this change in strategy by Ukraine are for the Russian economy and also for the war in Russia, because I do think that this is a turning point. This has the potential to bring about some sort of peace settlement, more than anything else that has been done over the course of the last two years or so. But before we get into all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. If you've been following my posts, you'll You'll know that the channel was recently hacked and taken down for a period of around five days by crypto hackers. And during that period, I very nearly had a nervous breakdown. However, all of the love and support and generosity that you guys showed me really helped to get me through that. And that is continuing. And I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that sent me messages, bought me a coffee, sent me a YouTube super thanks, or signed up as a patron. And I know hundreds of you have signed up as patrons and some of my existing patrons also increased their contributions. So thank you so much to everybody that did that. Also, thank you to everybody that signed up as a member through Buy Me A Coffee or signed up as a new YouTube member. Thank you so much for your support. It really helps to keep me going. It makes me realize that everybody does think that the channel is worthwhile and makes me think up more videos to post on a daily basis. So thank you. Russia's third largest oil refinery in the Tatarstan region, which processes over 340,000 barrels of oil per day, has been hit by a Ukrainian drone. And this strike is really significant in terms of the development of the drone technology because this refinery is located over 800 miles from the Ukrainian border and is the longest range successful drone attack that's been recorded so far. This map shows the location of the oil refinery, which is situated over 1,300 kilometers or around 807 miles from the front line. And it was reported that the drone hit a unit on site that processes 155,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The affected unit accounts for around half of the plant's total production capacity and represents around 6.2% of Russia's total refining capability. And this map details all of the Russian refineries that have so far been targeted by Ukrainian drones. And up until this point, it was thought that 1,000 kilometers or around 620 miles 
was the limit of the potential for these drone strikes to be successful. However, this latest strike confirms that Ukrainian technology is continuing to evolve and that the boundaries are constantly being pushed and more Russian refineries are now coming into range, including the ones that were previously thought to be outside of this zone. And just to put this strike into a financial context, the 340,000 barrels of crude oil that are being processed on site every single day will be sold as finished products. And those finished products have an average sale price of around $100. So that would equate to around $34 million per day of output. And if that site was to be closed for 365 days, being a year, it would equate to more than $12 billion of revenue for the Russian economy. So you can see why Ukraine is targeting these refineries, because one drone that may cost three or $4,000 to produce for Ukraine could have a financial impact on the Russian economy of tens of billions of dollars. And of course, this is the only way that Ukraine is realistically going to get Russia around the table to negotiate some sort of ceasefire. In addition to this latest drone attack, Russia has now announced that its Orsk refinery has had to close as a result of a flood caused by a dam that burst in Russia. And this refinery handles around 140,000 barrels of oil per day. So again, if you think of that in financial terms, if those finished products are worth around $100 per barrel, that equates to $14 million of revenue every single day that Russia is losing whilst this refinery is closed. And if the flood damage causes serious problems and this refinery was to be out of action for a full year, that would equate to over $5 billion of lost revenue for Russia. So you can see how vulnerable the Russian economy is to the closure of these refineries. They produce huge amounts of finished oil products, which are highly valuable and are producing a massive amount of income for Russia. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, one of the knock-on implications of the damage that's being inflicted on the Russian oil industry is that oil prices are now starting to rise rapidly as a result of rising concerns about the global supply of oil. This chart shows the movement in the price of Brent crude oil, which is one of the key benchmarks for oil prices globally over the last 12 months. And what this shows is that between July and September 2023, the price of a barrel of oil increased significantly from around $72 to a peak of more than $93 as a result of OPEC Plus announcing that it was cutting back on its production levels, which caused markets to be concerned that there were going to be global shortages. However, in the second half of 2023, we saw prices fall back down to around $70 per barrel as a result of a slowdown in the Chinese economy, which was expected to have a knock-on impact to the rest of the world and therefore reduce the demand for oil. And as we know from Simple Economics, if demand goes down and supply stays the same, then prices also go down. However, if you look at what's been happening in 2024, we have seen the price of oil rising rapidly. At the start of this year, it was trading for around $75 per barrel. Today, it's trading for more than $90, which is the highest price that we've seen globally for more than six months. And if we zoom in and have a look at what's been happening over the last month, which is the period that the drone attacks on Russian oil refineries has been reported, you can see that oil prices have increased consistently and rapidly over that period. And concerns are now rising that we may be heading back towards the dreaded $100 per barrel. If we now have a look at what's been happening to the price of Ural's oil, which is the main blend of Russian crude oil, you can see that it's followed a similar pattern to Brent crude oil, albeit the levels themselves are lower. The peak price for Russian crude oil was also in September 23, when it hit almost $84 per barrel. It then came back down significantly through the rest of 2023 to around $55, which critically was below the $60 price cap that's been set by the West for Russian oil. However, over the last few months, we've seen a significant increase 
in the sale price of Russian oil. And currently, Urals is trading for around $82 per barrel, which obviously is significantly above the $60 price cap. And this is one of the key issues that the USA and the rest of the West are now targeting in terms of all of the shipping companies and the countries that are buying that oil. They are trying to clamp down by increasing the policing of the sanctions to make sure that counterparties are not paying more than $60 per barrel. But as you can see clearly from this chart, deals are still being done above $60 per barrel. As you'll know if you follow the channel, Russia has severely limited the amount of data that it's releasing to the West. It doesn't want to show its hand to let everybody know what's actually going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have a very limited amount of financial information to work from. But one of the really interesting things to look at is what's happening with the price of the Russian ruble. Because generally speaking, when you're talking about currency for a freely traded currency, if there's a lot of demand for your products, then that means that your currency generally is also in demand and so the value should go up. But if nobody wants to buy your products, then demand for your currency should be falling and so the value should also fall. So let's have a look at what's been happening with the value of the ruble. This chart shows the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Russian ruble over the last 12 months. And what this shows is that this time last year, one US dollar was trading for around 81 Russian rubles. Today, it's trading for more than 92. And this chart can be split into two different sections. Between May and October 2023, we saw a consistent fall in the value of the ruble. And at the start of October 2023, the value fell below 100 rubles to $1. And this proved to be a critical level from President Putin's point of view, who stepped in and ordered the Russian central bank to do something about it. And a variety of restrictions were brought in on Russian businesses, which meant that they were forced to repatriate all foreign income back to Russia and convert it into rubles. So basically what was happening was that Russia were creating false demand for the ruble in order to improve its value. And you can see that between October 23 and the middle of January 24, this strategy proved successful. However, over the last few months, we've started to see the value of the ruble weakening again. And in normal circumstances, this would be counterintuitive given the fact that Russia is one of the world's largest exporter of oil products. And as we've just seen, oil is rising in price and therefore is in demand. However, what this chart is showing us is that there is a reluctance to deal with Russia. Over the last few months, we have seen countries like India and also China being a lot more cautious in terms of the deals that they're prepared to do with Russia. If you follow the channel, you'll know I recently reported on the fact that all Indian businesses have now refused to do any business with Sovkomflot, which is Russia's largest tanker fleet business, because that business has been sanctioned by the USA and the counterparties don't want to run the risk of being hit with secondary sanctions. So the sanctions are starting to hurt Russia's business lines, and this is also now having an impact on the Russian ruble. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening with the Russian oil business, and specifically Russian oil refineries, is a key moment in the war in Ukraine. Over the last two years, we have seen the might of Russia's military force bearing down on Ukraine, and as we all know, Russia has significantly more firepower than Ukraine, and so it's got the upper hand. The rest of the world is trying to assist Ukraine, giving it both financial and military support. However, it's always going to be on the back foot. But the change in tactics that we've seen over the last couple of months, with Ukraine successfully hitting Russian oil refineries, has really changed the perspective of what's going on. Because Russia and the rest of the world are fully aware that Russia is entirely dependent on the income that it's generating from those refineries and its crude oil production to be able to keep funding the war in Ukraine. So Ukraine has managed to find Russia's Achilles heel and the drones that it's developed are now flying over a thousand kilometers, more than 800 miles. And what that means is that virtually every single one of Russia's mega refineries is now vulnerable to attack. And these refineries are absolutely huge. 
they can produce a million barrels per day. And that is a huge amount of money. When you think of $100 for a finished barrel of oil, we're talking $100 million per day, and that equates to more than $5 billion per year per facility for some of these larger facilities. And of course, Ukraine doesn't have to destroy the whole facility. If it successfully strikes one area of that refinery, it could close down the entire plant. And we've talked about that in other videos. If you successfully hit a key part of the processing system, then Russia simply can't continue producing because oil refinery goes through a certain system. So if you take out a certain part of it, it can close down everything. And Russia is fully aware of this. So this has been a big change in terms of Ukraine's tactics. And what we've talked about in today's video is just one strike. But we've also seen that Russia is vulnerable to other things happening. There was a flood at the Ormsk refinery, which has now closed that facility. So Russia really is on the back foot in terms of trying to defend all of these refineries. Now, what's happened in terms of the global price of oil is obviously bad news for all of us, because if oil prices start going back up again, what that's going to do is feed through into the price of everything, because most goods need to be transported. So when fuel increases in price, it increases transport costs, and obviously then adds to the final price of whatever product we're talking about. In addition to that, petroleum products are also used as a raw material in a lot of different industries. So there's lots of different ways that an increase in the price of oil can feed through into the price of lots of other different products. And what that will do if we see a sustained period of high oil prices is it's going to push inflation back up. And if we have high inflation, there is then a risk that central banks around the world will have to start rethinking what they're doing with interest rates as we stand at the moment, everybody's expecting interest rates to start going back down at some point in 2024. Every time you switch on mainstream media, somebody's talking about when the Fed's going to cut rates, when the Bank of England's going to cut rates. Every country in the world is waiting for rates to start being cut, and that potentially then helps the economy to grow. However, if we see oil prices starting to go back up again and hit that $100 per barrel mark, then those rate cuts might not actually happen in 2024. And that will have negative implications for economies all around the world, because what it will mean is that borrowing costs will remain high, and therefore that discourages both companies and individuals from taking on more debt. That means that there will be less investment because companies won't be able to access that capital. And that potentially means a slowdown in terms of growth, less people being hired, and therefore we will have a slowdown in the economies. And we could see a global recession resulting from the fact that Ukraine is bombing all of the refineries in Russia. But in terms of specifically talking about what's happening in Russia and the Russian economy, Obviously, the impact of these drone strikes is hugely negative from Russia's income perspective because every single time it has to close a refinery, it's losing revenue. And the latest estimate in terms of all of the drone strikes that have happened so far is around 15% of Russia's total capacity is currently offline. And when you think in the context of Russia processing around 7 million barrels of oil per day, 15% equates to a million barrels of oil. So at a very basic level, that's $100 million of income that Russia is currently losing every single day. But it's actually much worse than that because the knock-on implication of closing a refinery is firstly, all of the staff that work in that refinery obviously won't have anything to do. If you're shutting the refinery down, then either they're being paid for doing nothing or you're not paying them at all. But either way, that's going to have a damaging impact on the local economy. But when you take a step back and think at how much these refineries contribute to the Russian economy, it is absolutely huge. It's not just the lost sales, it's the domino impact. The fact that all of those people are spending in the local economy and that fuels the growth in the general spend across the whole of Russia. So the overall situation in terms of the current closures is obviously bad news from Russia's point of view. But as I discussed in a recent video, Ukraine is targeting the production of 2 million drones in 2024. And the EU is also looking to supply 
a further million drones during this year. So that means that Ukraine will potentially have up to 3 million drones, which it will be using to target Russian facilities during the rest of 2024. And even if a fraction of those drones are successful, it's going to cause chaos in the Russian oil refinery business and therefore reduce Russia's income significantly. And that could be the one way that Russia is forced around the table to agree some sort of ceasefire because cutting off the finances is really the only way to bring President Putin around that table and agree to some sort of deal. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end and here's something to put a smile on your face.